Maverick Trading is always looking for new technologies and cutting edge software. In over 25 years, we've found many different successful strategies. However, they all are dependent on a good software system. Since our traders trade firm capital, we want to make sure they have their best foot forward. Thinkorswim is one of the best options pricing tools out there and a favorite amongst the Maverick community. As a community, we like to share our findings with each other and the public. If joining a community is something that you'd be interested in and being a professional trader, come check us out. Let's get into the tutorial. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another How To Thinkorswim. Joe with you here, continuing our series. I'm gonna get into chart settings today, just give you a brief overview of where it's at and the things that I like about it. So let's jump into the software. Now you can see we're already at the charts tab and I have selected Apple, I don't know, just for fun. But it's over here to the right, this little gear cog that I am focused on. I'm going ahead and open this up. Let's see what choices we have. So we've got general price access, time access, favorite time frames, and appearance. Those five categories or tabs, I should say, are, are going to allow you to add or manipulate the chart in some of the things you want to see or don't want to see. Past that, you've got equities, options, futures, and forex. These are different types of trading vehicles. So if you want to take a look at an options chart, then you can set up its defaults different than a forex chart, or in this case, what we're going to be talking about, equities chart. So you can get as customizable as it will allow. Now, Thinkorswim does give you some stuff already automatically checked by default. But in the general category, a couple of things that I do like. The first one is show high and low bubbles. Now, what's neat about this, it when I go ahead and click it and hit apply and OK, I'm going to show you that we get a high bubble and a low bubble. Now, what this does is depending on whatever you have set at default when it comes to your time frame, which I'll get to in a second, it takes that snap of the chart. So let's go to a three-year weekly. There's the high. There's the low. And automatically snaps the bubble. Now, this will not change if you are zooming in or zooming out. It just takes your default setting. So make sure you remember that before you select it. But it's one that I thought was kind of neat. If you want to see, hey, what was the high and the low over the last six months, in this case, in Apple? Well, there it is. There's the low. There's the high. This is a six month daily chart. Now let's jump back into that cog wheel and take a look at what I like and the price access. The price and the time access are my two favorites. The reason because I like to draw a lot of things and snap Fibonacci's and look at Bollinger Bands, Elliott Waves, stuff like that. So this is a way to offset your chart to give you room to draw. What am I talking about? Well, this expansion area, we've got up or down by a percentage. It defaults to 10, 20, 30, so on and so forth. I just do 10, but when I do this, I'm gonna hit apply and okay, and look what happened. This is the high point of this snapshot of my time frame in my chart, but it gave me a 10% move or 10% wiggle room above it. Also, it did the same on the low side. So what's cool about this, now I've got the ability to maybe draw trend lines, uh, write some notes up here, um, all sorts of different types of manipulations. Let's go back to our settings tab here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply on that. Uh, let's go to the time access. Now the time access is left and right. And what I like to do is I like to project where I think things are going. So it's this expansion area is what I want to focus on. It has some default. You can type in anything you want specifically. Um, I just like to go, go ahead and keep it a default of 10. I hit apply. And now I've got this nice buffer here between the last candlestick and the right edge of the chart. You can make this as deep as you want. Now we know we can manually drag this chart left and right, up and down. Once we change any of the price actions, we can manipulate this any way we want. But if you want to just bounce between chart and chart and chart, and you're going from ticker to ticker to ticker, it's nice to have a default. So let's jump back here and let's go to our next setting that I found to be kind of cool. Time frames. Favorite time frames. This is a very important part, I believe, if you're new to Thinkorswim, that you'd want to do very quickly. Come in here, set up your favorite time frames. I've got a five day, 15 minute, one day, one minute, five day, five minute. You guys can read them. I don't have to read them to you. The six month daily is what I spend a lot of time on and the three year weekly chart. So just make sure they're here because they're easily accessible up here with this icon, which I've got another class on we'll talk about later. 
So you can bounce between time frames very quickly using this uh, shortcut. Appearance wise, it's going to just be customized based on what you like. Uh, Thinkorswim's default is actually pretty good, but if you like green, red, I'm a green, red guy, up, down, makes it easy. Uh, you can change that here, make all your adjustments. Uh, so play with that. Like I say, these other few tabs, you got equities, options, futures, and forex. This will give you choices when it comes to what would you like displayed on those specific types of vehicles. Currency, future, option, equities. Now here at Maverick, we're options traders. So what I like to see displayed on the equity side as we go to this is options change. I have the choice. I can show if a ticker symbol carries options. I can show how many strikes I want. I'll do something very tight like four. Um, I can do I can have this up and why I like this is because if I go from one ticker symbol to the next to the next to the next to the next to the next, I want to make sure if it's optionable. This is a quick way to do it. So if I hit apply and OK and I put back on my buffer, let's go ahead and uh, fix this again here. Let's go to my time access, right? Expansion. Let's go 10 bars out. Actually, let's go 50 bars out because I want you to see this. Hit apply and OK. Take a look at what I have here. Now, what you're looking at is CP, call put, call put, call put. Now, these are expiration dates and uh, of options available at certain strike prices. So if I hover over this, this will tell me this is the weekly expiration for Apple, which is, you know, you saw the dates there. Sorry, folks, I'm rolling off, but it's 177 and a half call. But I don't have to really go too deep into that, right? I just can look at this and say, look, there's options available here, up in this area, uh, further out in time. Uh, well, let's since we're talking about settings, let me go back to it. I don't have what I'm. I don't know what time I'm looking at. So if I go back to my chart settings and scroll back over to my time axis, I'll notice down here that I actually have a display uh, uh, box that I did not check. Show expiration Friday. Let me go ahead and click this. Hit apply and OK. And what's beautiful about this, it gives me these nice red vertical lines with the date that shows expiration cycles. Right. So here they are. Here's one, here's two, here's three, so on and so forth. Now, these are the monthly expiration lines because I know, well, you could read the dates, right? And you can see that they're 30 days apart. But what's neat about this, since this is Apple, I can see that I have a weekly expiration. So I've got this, this week, this week, this week, the month. This week, this week, skips a week, the month. So it's really kind of cool that you can, at a glance, see what you're looking at. It's very helpful if you guys are options traders. I recommend coming in here, playing with this, click with it. This is some of the things that I like. I like to share things with the community that might be helpful for everybody. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our little cover of the chart settings. Join me for the next one. Talk to you next time. Bye, folks.